game down in Texas. Rutgers beat Army in their first game of the NIT as they beat Army 72 to 70. And that was in the first game of their experience in the NIT this year. Rutgers with a record of 23 and 6. While the Longhorns are 24 and 5 with the best record in the NIT of the remaining team. And now there are three. University of Texas beat Temple 72-58, while Rutgers beat Army 72-70. And then in the second round, they beat Nebraska. Again in Texas, 67-48, while Rutgers was handing Indiana State a 57-56 loss at Rutgers' home gym in Piscataway, New Jersey. So that is what has happened to those two teams as they come now to the semifinals, Texas and Rutgers. Contrastingly different in their style between the Longhorns and the Scarlet Knights. Texas a guard-oriented club. Rutgers a front-line-oriented club with their renowned here in the East ABC line of Abdel Anderson, James Bailey, and Hollis Copeland. Hollis Copeland at 6-6 in all probability will be charged with the job of guarding Probably John Moore of Texas. Moore, the trigger man on offense, will bring the ball up. Jim Krebax, the six foot one top scorer for the Longhorns, averaging 21 and a half points per ball game, is the leading scorer thus far in the NIT in points per game. Averaging about 21 points per game thus far in the NIT. But for the fans that follow Rutgers University, they are certainly familiar with the talents of Dr. Dunk James Jammin James Bailey at six foot nine, a very talented junior. In all honesty, though, for you fans that are back in Austin, Texas and are watching us, in case you tuned in late, North Carolina State defeated Georgetown in a thrilling overtime win by the score of 86 to 85 as little Clyde Austin had a 25-foot jump shot with a one tick on the clock remaining to shock Georgetown because Georgetown had taken the lead moments before on a free throw on the back end of a three-point play by Craig Shelton. That made it 85-84 Georgetown on the lead and then with Five seconds remaining before the end of the first overtime, and the only overtime as it turned out. North Carolina State rushed the ball down the floor, and with from 25 feet out, Clyde Austin hit a jump shot to give Norm Sloan's North Carolina State Wolfpack the victory, 86 to 85. Successful years for both clubs, no doubt. Rutgers' best year in their history, next to its 31 and 2 record of two seasons ago in terms of games won. The win over Indiana State gave the Scarlet its 23rd victory of the campaign. Rutgers won 16 of its last 19. For the folks that are listening back in Austin and watching back in Austin, Texas, we ask uh, the master control to hang up their phone as we are trying to reach them. And I'm sure once the game gets underway, which is, of course, in its utmost importance, and the verdict of this game, because the folks back in Austin, certainly avid fans of the Longhorns, many pack the super drum of 16,000 on many nights to watch the Longhorns with such impressive victories as victories over Arkansas at home, 75 to 69. Earlier in the season, defeating Houston at Houston, 100 to 89, and only one of five times during the year that the Longhorns scored more than 100 points. They split with Arkansas during the year, winning at home, as I mentioned, 75-69, losing to Arkansas at Arkansas, 75-71. They split with Houston, I mentioned, the 100-89 victory. They lost to Houston late in the year in the tournament, of course, in the Southwest Conference Tournament by the score of 92-90. You may not know a whole lot about the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. While they are well known in the New York, New Jersey area, they are not very well known in the southwestern part of these United States. They are an excellent ball club. 
they are a lot more patient in looking for the good shot than is the Longhorns of Texas, who will fast break a whole lot more than Rutgers will tonight. Rutgers, of course, led by James Bailey, Hollis Copeland, Abdul Anderson across the front line. They are more forward and center oriented by comparison to Texas, which is a guard oriented team. Texas, we expect, will come out of the zone. They will disguise the zone very well, and they'll make it tough on Rutgers, there's no doubt. Rutgers relies more on the inside muscle game. But of course, as I mentioned at the top of the show, if you were tuning in to watch the tail end of the Georgetown, North Carolina State game, the star attraction on the NIT in, 70, in 1978 has to be Texas head coach Abe Lemons. He last appeared in 1968 in the NIT when he coached Oklahoma City. And the interesting thing about that game, and I'm sure you've heard this story over and over and over again, when he coached Oklahoma City, Duke led up a half by 23, and instead of the usual halftime talk, Lemons conducted a full court scrimmage. Skins versus shirts, if you can remember back to the schoolyard days. Didn't help though, Duke won the game 97 to 81. And as I mentioned earlier, the NIT committee is very pleased with uh, the one-liners of Abe Lemons. Uh, he was two hours late in coming to the NIT luncheon on Friday. And the reason they gave was that he was tied up in a little traffic. Well, Friday was St. Patrick's Day, and in New York City, there was a very big St. Patrick's Day parade. First of all, his cab ran out of gas, and as he was, they finally got that problem solved. The cab driver decided to sit and watch the St. Patty's Day parade, and so that made Abe something like two hours late to the NIT luncheon. Of course, the folks back in Austin, Texas know about Abe's uh, famous opening of one of his television shows when Houston beat Arkansas to give Texas some life in the Southwest Conference during the regular season. Abe appeared on his television show laying down on his back with flowers in his folded hands. And to the strains of funeral music, he rose, looked into the camera, and proclaimed, we ain't dead yet. But in all honesty, beneath the facade lies a devout basketball man who takes his job very seriously. Tenth best record amongst the active coaches in the NCAA today. As a matter of fact, with the victory over Temple in the first round of the NIT, Abe Lemons won his 400th game. In case you tuned in at the very top of the show and you saw the tail end of the overtime thriller between Georgetown and North Carolina State, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State on a last second jump shot by Clyde Austin went through the courts, touched nothing but net, and it was an 86-85 North Carolina State victory over the Hoyas of Georgetown, sending John Thompson's crew home to a disappointing loss because it appeared they had the inside track of a victory after Craig Shelton hit a three-point play to put Georgetown ahead 85-84 and then if Clyde Austin decided to foul up John Thompson's plans for a final by hitting about 25-foot jump shot. My name is Howard David. I'll be joined by Bucky Waters for all the play-by-play -play and color commentary of this game between the Longhorns of Texas and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Leading scorer in the previous game, which you might have caught the tail end of, was John Duran, who had 25 points in the game for Georgetown and a losing cause. Tiny Pinder had 24. I believe he was the unofficial leading scorer for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Making his way up from the floor, Bucky Waters. Buck, uh, interesting game, the first game between North Carolina State and Georgetown. I think it was a game that... Uh that the 19,000 plus sellout crowd in Madison Square Garden deserve. An incredible finish, two fine basketball teams, and it really, it's, it's interesting to watch the NIT and all that's going on around it, and the great tournament that it is. In the sessions around the country, they've now drawn over 140,000 people already with the finals uh, to be held Tuesday night, which will be on national television. Buck, in looking at this format, and you mentioned the format before about being around the country, the games have drawn tremendous crowds all over the country. Down in Texas, where this game is going back to Austin, crowds of upwards around 16,000 at the Super Trump, which is a new stadium or a new uh, arena. 
And all over the country, the attendance has been tremendous during the preliminary rounds of the NIT, so the format up to right now is very successful. Yes, it was changed two years ago where the uh, just the first round was played uh, out across the country. And then this year they made the first two rounds. And, of course, the University of Texas was fortunate to be able to play both of those games at home and uh, be able to throw out a thrash Nebraska soundly. And in the first game, they beat a fine Temple team from Philadelphia. So they're here now really in their first road test of the NIT. But uh, I've heard fine things about them. I've heard this is a deceptive team. I have not seen the University of Texas. But I know good things about Southwest Conference basketball. An old friend of mine, in fact, when I was the basketball coach at West Virginia University, a fellow named Jim Carlin was coaching down in the Southwest Co uh, Conference at Texas Tech. And I said, hey, that's really football country down there. He said, I'm telling you, yeah, it's football country, but you're going to be surprised at how quickly the Southwest Conference comes along in basketball. And he pointed to the, uh, the fact that Houston, always a, a, a fine basketball school, was coming into the league, the new arenas, etc. Well, it has certainly panned out because we had the privilege last year, Howard, of doing the final game of the NIT in which uh, Houston lost a heartbreaker to St. Bonaventure. And Otis Birdsong and uh, Guy Lewis Fine team certainly was a great representative of Southwest Conference basketball. Now Arkansas's great success and Abe Lemons, and we'll probably have time to talk about Abe Lemons because I think I could talk about Abe all night, but that's nothing new for the folks down in Austin, Texas. I've been trying to explain to these people in the East what Abe Lemons is all about, and they're not believing me. So if Texas should win tonight and be playing in the finals on Tuesday on national television, I think the world is ready for Abe Lemons. I know New York is. When somebody questioned Abe Lemons during the halftime of the Georgetown North Carolina State game, they said, Abe, you, have, you are the 10th leading career winner amongst active coaches. And he said, well, the reason for that is that I've outlasted all the older guys. <laughs> well, he's tough. Uh, I, I'd like to tell one little story on him because we're still trying to fill here. When I coached at Duke, we were playing uh, Abe's Oklahoma City team here in the NIT. And we were ahead about 20 at the half, and just absolutely nothing went right. Well, we were ready to take our team off the floor and down at the halftime. And Abe's Oklahoma City team was ready to go off the floor, too, and he would have none of it. He said that uh, you guys played so bad, we're going to stay right here in practice. And so help me, in Madison Square Garden, he made his team stay on the floor. He made half of them go skins. The other half were shirts, and they scrimmaged for the entire 15-minute half. When well, we came back out with our Duke team, there he was, but it didn't help him because he still didn't have a very good basketball team, but Abe is a good basketball coach, and I think the humor and all that goes with uh, the scenario around Abe Lemons, I think people forget that. All right, Bucky, we'll return to Madison Square Garden in New York City for this game between Texas and Rutgers right after these messages. Ellis and Salais are garage and body shop serving Austin for 24 years, member of the Independent Garage Men's Association. Ellis and Salais are garage and body shop, 211 East Riverside Drive. There's a lot more to live for when you live in Lago Vista. I'm two minutes from a great golf course, and just look at that view. Besides, it's part of Austin without the noise and the congestion. Lago Vista, the best place ever to raise children. Good school and lots of clean outdoors to grow up in. Sure, it takes a little longer to drive home from work, but look what I have when I get here. Why would we want to live anywhere else? Lago Vista, on Lake Travis, the only thing missing is you. Until now, you had to choose between good taste and low calories. Until now. The time is right for Pepsi Light. Levity, Pepsi Light. We put a little levity taste in and took out half the calories. Refreshing Pepsi Light. The cola with the lemony taste in and half the calories of regular cola out. We put a little lemony taste in and took out half the calories. Mr. Gaddy's presents Ferdinand and his egg extravaganza from March 13th through March 25th at all participating Mr. Gaddy's. Everybody wins one of four Mr. Gaddy's menu items just for coming in. But most of all, you'll want to register where you see the Ferdinand display because the grand prize is a soft, cuddly rabbit just like Ferdinand. Enter the extravaganza at Mr. Gaddy's, the answer to a pizza lover's prayer.
We're at Madison Square Garden here in New York City. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone. I'm Howard David, along with Bucky Waters. Bucky, the former head coach at West Virginia and Duke. Duke Blue Devils, of course, are in the final four of the NC2A. I'm sure you've got your heart there to a degree, but yet our minds have to be on the basketball game tonight between Texas and Rutgers, and it promises to be a thriller, Bucky. Howard, it's been five years since I coached at Duke, and uh, I'm very happy for their success. But anybody who was in this building tonight had their heart only in one place, and that was in their mouth because the end of that first game, overtime, was sensational. The game that Bucky's talking about is Georgetown, North Carolina State. It, the game went into overtime. Final score was North Carolina State, 86, Georgetown, 85. Craig Shelton of Georgetown hit a jump shot, was fouled in the act of shooting with six seconds remaining in the overtime to put Georgetown even. Shelton went to the line on the back end of a three-point play, put the Hoyas in front by a one. North Carolina State had one shot left with six seconds left, and little Clyde Austin decided to put one up from 25 feet, hit nothing but net. Our Clyde Austin's about that big around, and he put up a jump shot and honestly didn't strain, and it had to be 38, 40 feet. It was only about two dribbles inside half court, and it hit nothing, nothing but cotton. And it was an incredible finish to just one super basketball game. I think perhaps the best thing we can do for the folks in Texas, maybe just tell them a little bit about this Rutgers team. Uh, I have not seen Texas, and I will be honest, and I'm looking forward to seeing them. And I've heard a lot of good things about them. I've heard they're deceptive, and they're sneaky, and most of all, they're doggone tough to beat, which is uh, very typical for Abe Lemon's teams. But this Rutgers team is pretty much a front court oriented team, and James Bailey, uh, referred to in the East as King James is one of the premier centers in the country and that's not a hype. He truly is an outstanding basketball player. At 6'10", he plays above the square and really keys their entire team. Rutgers several years ago was a transition team when they went to the Final Four. They were run and gun and they have changed their pattern just a little bit. But the one thing that is constant and that is they are dependent on the front court and that being uh, Copeland up front at 6'6", and Abdel Anderson, and they are two different kinds of forwards. Uh, Copeland is a power forward at 6'6", with a 38 sleeve, high jump 6'6", he can run and jump and powerful, and has the good medium jump shot. Abdel Anderson is a very slender, jump shooting, smooth kind of forward. If Rutgers has a weakness, it's in the backcourt and that has been exploited. I don't know if Texas is able to apply great pressure, but North Carolina did to Rutgers in this building oh, about three weeks ago and absolutely destroyed them. If the Rutgers guards can handle whatever defensive problems Abe Lemons and the Texas team can give them and get the ball into the front court, Texas has some problems. If whatever they have in their defensive arsenal is able to negate the guards, then I think Texas has an excellent chance to win. Heck, I don't know. They may have a great chance to win anyway. I just don't know enough about Texas. But with Rutgers, you must stop Bailey, and you must do something to cut off that front court. And the easiest way to do it is to pressure the guards out of the game. We might be seeing Hollis Copeland, who Bucky talked about at six foot six, guarding double zero John Moore as he brings the ball up. This is a tactic that Tom Young has done and done successfully during the year by having the big Hollis Copeland guard the smaller guards as he brings the ball up. Well. Uh, you say 6'6 six, six on a guard, but Hollis Copeland is an exceptional athlete. I mentioned the, the fact that he high jumps 6'6. Six, six. He has all kind of records in the 100 and 220. So don't sell him short as far as agility. And of course, by pressuring the guard that way, uh, it makes it very difficult for those smaller guards to get the ball and get advance it by passing to the big men in the key scoring areas. Tom, uh, Tom Young, the Rutgers coach, has done a lot of things successfully over the years. And we're going to see, in addition to two, to two talented teams, we're going to see two fine coaches. All right, with the uh, sounding of the clacks and the teams are getting ready to be introduced on the floor. Teams will be introduced if they held to the format of the first game, one player from each squad. Rutgers will be clad in their home uniforms. The Scarlet Knights, of course, red and white uniforms. Texas in their traveling uniforms. Bucky, I'm amazed at the transition of Texas from a football power 
and remaining of football power to now where the basketball team is getting a great deal of recognition. They are 17th ranked as they come on the floor tonight. Well, I think the, the bottom line there has to be Abe Lemons. Uh, Abe is a great salesman. He's going to recruit good players. Last year was his first at Texas, and he was 13 and 13. And he is one of the most remarkable coaches and that he does it without all the uh, uh, the super uh, high pressure. He's a very amiable, very genial guy. He fits right into Southwest, but he can coach basketball. That's Abdul Anderson right there at 6'7", a junior from Belleville, New York. Ron Baxter at 6'4", sophomore, will be the forward for the Longhorns. Number 34, Hollis Copeland, a 6'6", senior from Trenton, New Jersey, one of the two starting seniors for Rutgers. Tyrone Branion at six foot seven, a 220-pound junior from Placentia, California. The slamming, jamming James Bailey. The starting center for the Scarlet Knights at 6'9. Gary Goodner will be Bailey's counterpart at center at 6'7, 220, the only senior for Texas in their starting five. Rodney Duncan will be one of the guards wearing number 14, a sophomore from Philadelphia. His counterpart, John Moore, double zero, led the Southwest Conference in steals, led the Southwest Conference in assists. And the other guard for Rutgers will be Steve Heffley, a 6'5 senior from East Rockaway, New York. And his counterpart, Jim Prevax, the second leading scorer in the Southwest Conference this year. Of course, the head coach is Tom Young for the Scarlet Knights. You'll see him during the game with a towel draped around his shoulder most of the way. And, of course, Abe Lemons, the head coach for the Longhorns of Texas, the two officials, Mickey Crowley and Larry Limbo. And now John Condon, the PA announcer of Madison Square Garden, asking the crowd to rise for the playing of our national anthem. In case you are just tuning in, North Carolina State defeated Georgetown in overtime, thereby necessitating the late start of this game. 86-85 to 85 was the final, so North Carolina State's Wolfpack will meet the winner of this game between the Longhorns of Texas, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers on Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Larry Lembo in the middle of your screen, one of the officials. At the bottom of your screen, Mickey Crowley. Lembo will toss it up between Goodner and Bailey, and it's Rutgers that controls the draw. Rodney Duncan against a Texas man for man. Now they ship inside to Bailey. Texas breaks it up very well. Baxter to Moore. Ahead it goes to Krivax, and it's knocked out of bounds by the Scarlet Knights' Rodney Duncan. Well, it starts out as turnover city, but Texas very alert, uh, denied the first attempt to put that ball into James Bailey. I'm not sure that's a man for man. I want to look at it a little bit, Howard. Well, they, they told me that they that Texas disguises their zone very well. They they disguised it very well, and I can pick it up. It's your full record the yep. first time. All right, from outside, Moore puts the Longhorns in front, two to nothing, John Moore. This is Steve Heffley, number 24. Rodney Duncan works it around to Copeland. Abdul Anderson in the corner. Texas in his zone. There's the ball turned over and stolen by Moore. Ahead it goes to Krivax, who lays it up. He missed it. The follow by Moore is missed again. 
And it's run down on the corner by Tyrone Branyard. Shot is put up, no good. Ring good bound by Bailey. Ahead it goes to Abdul Anderson. If the fans in uh, Austin didn't know it, Texas is on the road. There's a very large contingent here from Rutgers. That's what all the red is about, and their nickname right now is Scarlet Fever. They're very excited about this ball club. Shot by Moore is missed. Bailey on the save. Heffley to Duncan, who triggers their offense. Heffley and Duncan at the guards. Anderson, Bailey, and Copeland across the front. This is Copeland. Now Duncan with a left-hand dribble running. One hander is good as he kisses it off the glass. Rodney Duncan figures to be one of the weaker spots. He's a fine little guard, but he's trying to replace Eddie Jordan. And for those that have followed college basketball, Eddie Jordan was an institution in the backcourt for Rutgers through their great teams. And I think Rodney Duncan tried to be Eddie Jordan for a little too long. He's now settled down and playing his game. Shot blocked by James Bailey. And fouled all the way up. Very persistent inside. Good move inside. Texas having no trouble getting that ball in. Good second effort, going back up and finally drawing that charge. One thing about Bailey, he is not bashful uh, defensively. He's going to try to reject everything. So if Texas is able to get the ball down in low, as they did that time, it'll be problems for Rutgers. Uh, it's either a reject or a foul. There's nothing at all bashful about Bailey. Gary Goodner, a 68% free throw shooter, makes the first and the second. Foul was committed by James Bailey. First foul of the ball game. 17:55 remaining first half. We are tied at four. Rutgers and Texas second half of the doubleheader. The alley oop to Bailey. Nice pass from Rodney Duncan. It appears that Texas is in some kind of a matchup or a zone, which means there isn't much pressure on the guards out front. And one of the things they're going to have to be concerned about is that pass. Without pressure on the guards, they can lob that thing in there at will. And I don't know if Texas has anybody to go up with Bailey or not. I doubt it. Loose ball, and they'll jump it up. Gary Goodner, number 42 for Texas. Here's the good pass. Rodney Duncan hanging it up over the top of the Texas defense. James Bailey doesn't have to bring it back down. He really is an exceptional athlete. Krivax with the long-range bomb does not go, and a loose ball foul underneath is going to be called on Steve Hefley of the Scarlet Knights in the middle of your screen, number 24. Hefley's a big guard at 6'5". He has played his, uh, a great deal of forward throughout his career, but uh, he has the reputation for the long jump shot, but I think the rest of his game has come along nicely. Inside, no go, it does not count. Ron Baxter is called for the traveling violation. First turnover against the Longhorns here in the early going. Six to four, Rutgers leading it. 17-15 remaining first half at Madison Square Garden in New York. Again, pretty pass from Duncan to James Bailey. Rodney Duncan, without any pressure at all, in that two-guard front. I believe it's a, it's a straight zone now, but they're doing some matching up. But that's giving him all kinds of time. Grievax answers the crowd with a jumper, and it's an 8-6 to six Rutgers lead. Well, that's a pure-looking jump shot Grievax has. They tried it again inside on the alley-oop, only this time Mickey Crowley detects a personal foul on James Bailey. That'll be his second. Two quick ones. Abe Lemons has to be happy about that. James Bailey had foul trouble against Indiana State in the second round of the NIT. As a matter of fact, he only played something like 23 minutes the whole game. Saddled with foul trouble most of the way. Wound up scoring the winning basket. James Bailey right there, picking it off, creating the second turnover. This is Copeland. So far, Rutgers has been able to get down inside uh, the matchup zone by the Longhorns. I expect Abe will be tightening that up in a little bit or putting more pressure on and bringing it out. Well, that time, Hollis Copeland put a lot of pressure on John Moore, and he was called for the traveling violation by the official Larry Limbo. On the turnover, Rutgers ball. They lead it 10 to 6 with 16-15 remaining in the first half. This is Duncan from long range. Rodney Duncan, two field goals for four, and it's a 12-6 Rutgers lead. 
the zone press by Rutgers really not that tough. I think it's more of a tempo thing than anything else. And uh, as usual, Abe Lemon's team can run and shoot. Ron Baxter with a crowd quieter. Rutgers 12 to 8 over Texas, and Steve Hefley ups the count to 14 to 8. Everybody for Rutgers has scored at least a field goal. Fifteen and a half to go. First half at Madison Square Garden. The second half of the doubleheader. NC State beat Georgetown in the first half. So the Wolfpack will play the winner of this game. Right now Rutgers leads it 14 to 8. Krivax with room. Mm. Boy, that's a beautiful looking jump shot. And so far he hasn't had any difficulty getting it off. Rebacks 44% from the outside during the year. And a traveling violation was called against Rodney Duncan. And then the officials called for the timeout. With the score, Rutgers 14 and Texas 10. Let's pause for a minute. You're looking at a couple of smart people who save regularly. Here's what's really smart about them. They're saving at the biggest bank in town. Their savings account is important in their financial relationship with their own personal banker. It helps them make the best deal whenever they need a loan. It helps give them access to experts in investments, trusts, and business services. It saves them time and money through automatic transfers from their checking account. In other words, they're making good use of the full services of a strong bank. These services are worth a lot of money, and no savings and loan, no credit union, no other Austin bank can deliver them as well as the 580 personal bankers in this building. Our point is this. You're better off at Austin National Bank. Might qualify as one of the younger of the rooters here tonight at Madison Square Garden. 18,000 strong, and they are seeing some great basketball, Bucky Waters. Unquestionably, uh, and I'm afraid that maybe Texas and Rutgers are caught up just a little bit in the fact that this game, at least the start of it, until it can generate its own momentum and identity, has to be a little anticlimactic. The first one being overtime and a 40-foot shot to decide it. I think folks now are just kind of getting zeroed in and concentrating on these two fine teams. Texas with a basketball. Branyan inside on a pretty pass from John Moore in the corner. Yes, it was. Texas cleaned out the backside of that uh, Rutgers man-for-man -man defense. And, of course, uh, Bailey likes the front, and it's smart that he does. And that keeps him out of foul trouble if he can keep that center from handling the ball. But he needs some help on the weak side. Alice Copeland gives him some help there from the outside with a jumper, his second of the night. And it's a 16-12 Rutgers lead over Texas with still 14-20 to play in the first half. Rutgers and a man for man. This is John Moore, double zero, averaging 13 a game. Copeland now picking up Krivax, the great outside shooter. Hey, who puts it on the floor pretty well, too? He's, no, he's not just a long-range bomber. That's a pretty clever move. Krivax with three for three from the outside, three for four, correction for the outside, six points. And it's a 16-14 Rutgers lead, pretty pass inside. And goaltending will be the call against Goodner. Rodney Duncan again finding the seam inside. Abdel Anderson, not a power player, tried to put up a little delicate shot. Goodner nailed it on the board. Good call. Back we come the other way, and John Moore banks it home, and it's an 18-16 Rutgers lead. Second field goal for Moore. It looks like the, the Texas backcourt trying to put a little more pressure on Duncan out there. Well, Hefley answers the call and hits the jumper. Steve Hefley with his second field goal. All five Rutgers players with four points apiece. 20 to 16, the Scarlet Knights lead it with 13.05 to play in the first half. Revax against Copeland. Won't go down, and James Bailey clears the boards. Quick outlet, this is Hollis Copeland. Banks it home, pretty play. Copeland on the open floor can be a devastating player. That time he had the smaller uh, Texas guards back, so it was no problem to just go right over the top of him. 
22-16, the Scarlet Knights have been in control most of the way. This is their biggest lead, six points. And we're going to get a foul called against Steve Heffley. That'll be his second and fourth team foul against the Scarlet Knights. Ron Back's the very deceptive player. Uh, he changes directions extremely well. Uh, a little appears to be a little chunky for a basketball player, but I guarantee he's got quickness. I'm impressed with him. Tom Brown has come in at six foot two for the Scarlet Knights, replacing Steve Hepley. Pretty pass inside and banking it a little bit too hard was Gary Goodner. Rutgers with a rebound. This is Tom Brown. Tom Brown with a good outside shot. Finds Copeland with room. Off the front of the iron rebound to Gary Goodner of Texas. The Longhorns trail by six, 22-16. Texas very patient. Wisely, I think, uh, Rutgers uh, likes to get that break going. They're just picking their spots in there, doing a nice job. All right, good give and go from Krivax to Goodner for the bucket. I especially liked uh, the little bit of that 1-4 attack they ran against uh, uh, Rutgers a little bit ago. Abdel Anderson from the corner. Rebound is taken down by the Longhorns. This is Moore. With Krivax on his left, it's Moore dishing oh, it off. Pretty play. With the bucket, Ron Baxter, his second of the night, on a great pass from John Moore. Good penetration. Boy, I'll say, he really is under control. That's like an eel. All right, with a timeout, a score... Rutgers 22 and Texas 20. Buck, another look at it. Yes, Moore almost lost his balance, found the crease, found Baxter coming from the weak side. A very fine play, a great penetration. All right, with a timeout, Rutgers leading Texas 22-20, and we'll return to Madison Square Garden after these messages. Sound the greet, you'll clear the floor, we'll dance the day away. I'll show you a time you'll never forget down at Charo Day. So come on down to the valley, down around Brownsville Way. We'll pass around the cold and star and drink the Charo Days. We'll pass around the cold and star and drink the Charo Days. Charo Days and the great taste of Lone Star beer. No place but Texas. For the first time, Lynn Nightingale and Ron Shaver together in Ice Capades. See the electrifying and thrilling performances of these two Canadian champions, Lynn Nightingale and Ron Shaver, exclusively in this year's Ice Capades. The Ice Capades come to Austin April 13th to 16th for six performances at the UT Special Events Center. Call 471-7733 for information. First foul against Texas called against John Moore. Rutgers basketball on the non-shooting foul. They lead it 22-20 over the Longhorns of Texas with still 11-12 to play in the first half. Texas now definitely matching up from that 2-3 alignment. Missed follow by Kelvin Troy, who's just come into the game for the Scarlet Knights as he replaces Hollis Copeland at forward. Texas working the ball. This is Krivax inside pass and a pretty one it was for the bucket. Number 31, Tyrone Brannion. Texas has a funny pace, Howard. As I said earlier, this is the first time I've seen them, but they, they just don't get too excited. They just kind of run their things and take their good shots, and they hit them. And I guess that's why they're here. Tom Brown, his first bucket of the evening on his first shot, 24-22. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers in the lead. In case you've just tuned our way, Howard David along with Bucky Waters, Madison Square Garden. The Knights of Rutgers leading Texas up to that moment, and now it's a tie ball game. Ron Baxter with six points. We are tied at 24. Oh, he hits that board hard. Texas is impressive, impressive in what they're doing. They don't look that impressive on the court, but they can play. James Bailey on the turnaround miss. Long rebound of John Moore leads the break. Got Baxter on the right side on a pretty pass. Mm. 
Texas, for the first time, while well, correction, the second time, has taken the lead. They led 2 to nothing. They now lead 26-24 with 9.35 to play in the first half. Thus far, the inside game of James Bailey has been seen on only two occasions down court. Duncan almost put it in on an intended pass. <laughs> Here's Bailey. A little short. Three backs with a pretty cross-court pass to Moore. Back to Baxter. He lays it up, and it doesn't go, but he was fouled. Beautiful play, and uh, Austin, uh, Austin, Texas, has to be proud of this team because they're really pushing the ball up the floor and really out hustling. Good deflection pass. Almost a three-point play. Boy, is he strong. Takes it in there and uh, finds a little spot to get it on the board soft while he takes a pretty good beating. Of course, he looks like he's strong enough to handle it. Steve Heffley is back of the game along with Hollis Copeland. James Bailey and Rodney Duncan sit down for Tommy Young's Scarlet Knights, 23 and 6 coming in. Abe Lemons, Longhorns at 24 and 5. Baxter, the left handed free throw shooter, 77% during the year, makes the first one. He's got nine points to lead everybody. Make it 10. So Texas with their biggest lead of four, 28-24, with still 9.05 remaining in the first half. They told me that Texas was a fast-breaking unit, and they have demonstrated it up to a point, but they have shown they are patient as well. On the follow, Hollis Copeland. That has to be the biggest concern for the Longhorns, keeping that good front line of Rutgers off the board. It looks like they're going to be able to score all right. Texas averaging better than 82 a game. Krivak's from downtown. Oh, he's got a range like an area code. That, that's, that's a <laughs> long jump shot. That thing came from 7th Avenue. Oh. 30 to 26. The Scarlet Knights trailing Texas now. This is Kelvin Troy. Shot blocked and pretty block it was by Tyrone Brannion. This is Heffley. They work the inside to Abdel Anderson. Thirty to twenty-eight, Texas. If, if Texas is awed by playing in Madison Square Garden, they don't show it. They're just almost uh, methodical in what they do. Now, Abe Lemon said he did not scout Rutgers. He says we don't scout many of our opponents. This is Krivax from the corner. Krivax now with five field goals for ten. He and Baxter. Each with 10 points, and Texas again a four point lead, 32 to 28. Texas now matching up in their defense. Rutgers has to keep solving that defense because they do change it from pure zone to match up. They need a little more movement to get the good shot. Kelvin Troy had the room but could not put it down. Troy, not one of their better shooters. Texas leading it by four with 7.15 remaining. Krivax again. Oh, my. Now you know why this young man was second in the Southwest Conference in scoring and leads the NIT scoring thus far in points per game. As we pointed out earlier, he's not just a jump shooter. He can put that ball on the floor and go to the basket. So if you're going to come out there and get him, uh, you better be a pretty good athlete. Bailey is on the bench as Copeland fires from the corner. Otto's Copeland with 10 points, and it's 34-30 Texas. And a real Texas shoot him up. Yeah, and I think Texas has to be happy. They've taken away the inside game of Rutgers, and they're forcing the perimeter shooting, which really isn't one of the strengths of this fine Rutgers team. Again, Baxter. Ron Baxter muscling his way in. Lemon said that we don't muscle anybody inside. I don't know if he watched the first half of this yet. <laughs> They're doing a lot of muscling underneath. 36-30, Texas matching their biggest lead with still 6-10 to play in the half. This is Calvin Troy putting it up. He's going to be called for an offensive charge. Good team defense here. Going down the baseline. Good strong move. He beat his man, but excellent defensive coverage from the weak side. Notice Texas didn't try to block the shot, just held a good spot. Texas 36, Rutgers 30 right here. Let's pause for this message. Come and let me show you 
a house that's made for you, a home with a lovely fireplace, a rest for porch swing too, a window to let the sun in, a place when the kids are grown, let Heaton take you to this place, let Heaton take you home. Heaton Real Estate, marketing fine new homes and already established homes, so when you're ready to buy your new home, let Heaton take you home. Heaton Realtors, 12701 Research Boulevard. Everybody needs, and if you don't buy before prices go up. High pressure sales tactics like that really turn me off. At Brake Check, we simply don't allow it. Period. Sure, if we discover a problem with your brakes, we're going to tell you about it. And we'll also make recommendations if your car needs parts or service. We'll give you the facts, and then you make up your own mind. You'll get reliable information from responsible professionals who don't like high pressure sales tactics any more than you do. 6.08 to play first half. Texas leading Rutgers by the score of 36 to 30. We're delighted to be feeding this game back to Austin, Texas on KTBC. Channel 7 in Austin. Howard David along with Bucky Waters. Second half of the doubleheader. North Carolina State defeated Georgetown in the first one in overtime, 86 to 85. Just looking up what Ron Baxter weighs. They've got him listed at 205, Bucky. I think he might be closer to 225. He is really strong. He looks like one of those guys on a seafood diet. That means he eats everything he sees. But he can play. I don't believe the 205, but I believe he can play. Here's Bailey back in the game and answering very quickly with a bucket. James Bailey with six points. Cuts the Texas lead 36 to 32 with still five and a half to play in the first half. This is Krivax, one of the few he's missed, and Abdul Anderson sweeping the boards, leading the break up the floor to Rodney Duncan. Look at his pass from Duncan to Bailey, and what a shot! Oh, my! Showtime. Texas couldn't do any more than they did. They had five people down in the lane. They jammed it up, and I tell you, that was a double hernia shot. you got to be lucky on those. Alice Copeland clearing the missed John Moore shot, and Rutgers starting to run a little bit more. They've cut the lead to two. Duncan dribbling through a crowd, and this is Heffley. Once Texas has been able to get back into the set defense, Rutgers has had a little difficulty with it. I'm sure they'd like to beat it down the floor every chance possible. Abdel Anderson very aggressive off both boards. There's the alley-oop to Bailey, intercepted on a fine play by Gary Goodner. At 6-7, he gets up there against the bigger James Bailey. Actually, the pass was a little bit underthrown. I, I don't know that Goodner can get up there with James Bailey with the size differential if the pass is thrown properly. Ovi Dotson's in the game for the Longhorns of Texas, making his first appearance. Only a junior out of San Antonio. He's replaced Branyan. And the officials have called for time. With the score, Texas 36, Rutgers 34. Let's pause for a minute. What makes KVET, one of America's great radio stations, the best country music in the world? Outstanding personalities. Jim Travis, Arlie Duff, Sammy Allred, Penny Reeves, Jerry K. Green, Mark Jones, and Lydia Anderson. One of the state's best news departments with Jim Ribble and sports with Larry Carlson. Austin's only radio professional weather staff, anchored by James C. Fiddler. Just some of the reasons why the 24-hour country giant, KVET, is truly one of America's great radio stations. When you started out, you had a dream, you had to show That a man working hard could really make a business grow The dream has grown through the years and still going strong And it took capital to help you write your song Building a big business can be rough, but a strong bank like Capital National can help smooth things out over the long haul. Tom Young of Rutgers, a record of 307 victories, 158 defeats. That's his career mark. That includes the state of American University, as well as the great job he has done at Rutgers. Two years ago, they were 32-0, Bucky going into the final four. 
watching him gnaw on a towel throughout the game, it's it's just like Linus' security blanket. But I have to believe in April, he does something to his stomach to get all that lin out. 36-34, the Longhorns of Texas in the lead with 3.45 to play first half. This is Hefley with a good fake on Baxter, banks it off too hard, and the rebound to Tyrone Branyard. Three backs, the top scorer thus far, along with Baxter, each with 12. This is John Moore, double zero, guarded by the bigger Hollis Copeland. Talked about that at the top of the show. This is Krivax firing and hitting. Very well conceived. Krivax coming off the double screen down low. Uh, this Texas team just doesn't get ruffled. They run their stuff. They know who's supposed to shoot and from where, and they make it happen. 38-34, the Longhorns lead it with 3.05 to play in the half. James Bailey on the turnaround, a little too hard. Copeland with a follow, doesn't go down. But Duncan.